Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Medicare 101 webinar. Um, I still may give everybody another minute or so. I'm still seeing some activity of people logging in. We will go ahead and get started. Um, welcome. Today, we have Sarah Floramonte from um, the Ohio Senior Health Insurance Information Program, or OSHIP for short, and it definitely needs to be shortened. Um, I am Jackie Stromberg, and I work for Services for Independent Living and I am gonna be your um, facilitator today. Before I turn it over to Sarah, we've got um, a few housekeeping rules just to go over. Um, everyone will be muted during the webinar, but please feel free, put any questions that you have um, going along in the questions box and Sarah will answer as many as she can at the end of the webinar. Um, the webinar is also being recorded and the recording will be available next week on both our website and our YouTube channel. Um, so if you wanna go back and review it, feel free or share it with somebody else, um, do that as well. Directly after the webinar, a satisfaction survey will pop up and we'd appreciate your feedback. Um, we especially look to uh, get more topics for future webinars. Um, so we're doing the things that people are interested in. As well, um, if you look in the handout section, there is a Medicare one-on-one -on -one booklet available for you to download. Um, so please do so. Uh, after the fact, if you need it, feel free to um, email me and I can send that to you. And without further ado, I am gonna turn it over to Sarah and let her start her presentation. Hi, good morning, everybody. Like Jackie said, my name is Sarah Floramonte and I look forward to um, sharing with you information about Medicare this morning. So thank you for having me and I'm excited to get started. Like Jackie said, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put those in the question panel. Um, I will answer all of those at the end of our presentation. And as soon as I can get that up here, I think Jackie, you have to give me access to. Yeah, that's common. Okay, great. There we go. <laughs> all right, there we go. All right, let me pull this up here. All right. Okay, so hopefully everyone can um, see my presentation up there. This is our Medicare 101 presentation. And first I wanna um, talk a little bit about OSHIP, who we are and what we do. We are a federally funded program for Medicare education here in Ohio. So I'm not an agent, I'm not associated um, with any agency. I'm not here to sell you any products. I'm only here um, this morning to give you free, objective, unbiased information when it comes to Medicare. OSHIP is made up of a couple different parts. I'm part of the Speakers, speakers Bureau. Usually I am out in the community at senior centers, community centers, um, anywhere that anyone will have me to come educate Medicare beneficiaries about Medicare. The other um, aspect of OSHIP is our hotline. We do have a toll-free hotline that's local to Ohio. So they answer that hotline 7.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. So if you ever have any questions about Medicare and you wanna get that objective unbiased information, go ahead and call our hotline. And their number is 1-800-686-1578. Like I said, I'm usually out in the community, but because of COVID, we still are all at home. So we're not quite 
fully back into the community doing those presentations. And because of that, we are offering virtual counseling services. I actually do believe that our virtual counseling will continue even after COVID because so many people have taken advantage of it, which is so great. So I have the link um, up there. It's ohiomedicarecounseling.as.me. But if you don't write that down or you don't have it, it is on our website. So if you download that Medicare 101 book that Jackie referenced from the handout section, go to our website, you can sign up for a virtual counseling session there. And that's someone face-to-face, one-on-one, through the computer screen, and they can help you um, with your Medicare. If that is Sarah, something you are interested oh, sorry. in. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but we can only see half of the PowerPoint. It's kind of... Let me see. There we go, now we can see oh. the whole thing. <laughs> Thank now you. I, now you can see it? Yep, now we can see the whole thing. It was like part of the screen wasn't showing for some reason. Okay, that's really strange because- But now, we've got it all now. It's on a, what is Medicare slide? Um, yes, the only thing, how about, I didn't have control of it right then. How about now? Can you see the whole thing now? Yes, yes okay, we can great. see everything now. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a broad overview about what Medicare is. So most people know that Medicare is a federal health insurance program and it's administered by CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. There's actually three ways that you can qualify for Medicare. Many people think that the only way you can qualify is being 65, but there are other ways. So you do qualify for Medicare when you turn 65. You can also be on Medicare at any age if you are disabled or if you're diagnosed with end-stage renal disease and some other diseases as well, like ALS, for example. So there are different ways that people can qualify for Medicare under the age of 65. When we talk about Medicare, when you're joining Medicare and as you're going on through your Medicare life, you have two options. So a lot of our presentation this afternoon or morning, excuse me, is going to be talking about these two different options. So you do have choices when you start Medicare and throughout your life when you're on Medicare. So I like to think about these options as cards in my wallet. I have option one, which is three cards in my wallet. I have my original Medicare card, some sort of secondary insurance, and prescription drug coverage. And I'm gonna go all over all of this in detail. This is just a general overview right now. So that's option one, three different cards in my wallet. My other option is called a Medicare Advantage plan. With a Medicare Advantage plan, I have one card in my wallet, one thing that encompasses all of my Medicare. So these are my two options. Option one, three cards in my wallet with original Medicare or option two, which is a Medicare Advantage plan. And again, we're gonna break all of this down in detail. Just to take a step back, I know most people on this call have already applied for Medicare and already have Medicare, but I do wanna run through this quickly just to, um, if there's anyone under 65 on our call this afternoon. If you already had, um, were already receiving Social Security when you turn 65, you're gonna be automatically enrolled into Medicare. So like I said, you're eligible for Medicare when you turn 65. And if you decided to take your social security at 62, 63, 64, you're gonna be automatically enrolled. So you're gonna automatically get that card in the mail. Everyone else has to apply for Medicare through social security. So a lot of people sometimes think that Medicare and social security are the same thing. They're not really the same thing. They're different organizations, they are separate, but they're tied together in a couple of key ways. And one of those ways is you apply for Medicare through Social Security. Another way they're tied together is you pay your Medicare premium to Social Security or it's taken out of your Social Security check before you receive it. So Medicare and Social Security are tied together in, in a few ways. So if you're applying for Medicare, you're gonna do that through Social Security during what's called your seven month initial enrollment period. Your seven month initial enrollment period is the month you turn 65, the three months before, and the three months after. So using myself as an example, my birthday is January 22nd. Medicare always starts on the first of the month. So my Medicare is eligible to start January 1st. So I could apply from October because I have October, November, December, January, February, March, April. So my initial enrollment period would be October through April. 
Like I said, you apply for Medicare through the Social Security office. A couple of key updates with Social Security right now, and these apply for everyone. You may already know this, but Social Security offices are actually closed still due to COVID-19. So they haven't opened back up, up yet. So when it comes to your Medicare, your two options for applying are online at ssa.gov, or you can um, call an office and schedule an appointment. If you need to talk to Social Security for any reason right now, whether it's Medicare related or it's simply Social Security related, I do suggest that you try to call your local office. If you go to ssa.gov, there is a um, office locator on there. And if you click the office locator, if you put in your zip code, it's gonna give you the direct phone number to your local office. So if you need to speak to Social Security, I really recommend doing that. Because all the offices are closed, that national line is really overloaded right now. And we've had reports that people are really having a hard time getting someone on the phone at Social Security. They're having much better success, much quicker service calling their local office. So that's just a little, a little tip for you when it comes to Social Security. There are special enrollments when it comes to Medicare. So we have a lot of people who actually delay enrollment into Medicare. So you might encounter someone in your life who's 67, 68, 69, 70, whatever, and they say, I'm actually not on Medicare. So it's important to know that if you're still working or your spouse is still working and you're covered under current employer health insurance, so you're still working or a spouse is still working, you can delay enrollment into Medicare. So if you're working past age 65, if you're still working, that's okay. You won't have any penalties or anything like that as long as you're covered under current employer group health insurance. So you can delay your enrollment into Medicare. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Medicare, get into the nuts and bolts here. So we have our uh, red, white, and blue Medicare card. There's a picture of that. Some of you might remember when your Medicare card had your social security number on it. So about three years ago, our big OSHIP um, drive was informing everyone that they're gonna get a new social security card, or excuse me, Medicare card. That's no longer gonna have their social security number on it. Everyone on this call should have received that new Medicare card by now. If by any chance you still have an old social security card or old, excuse me, Medicare card with your social security number on it, please, please, please give us a call and let us know and we can get you one of those Medicare cards with your Medicare number on it. The easiest way to know if it's a Medicare number is if it's a combination of numbers and letters. So the new Medicare numbers, well, new in the last few years are a combination of numbers and letters. So original Medicare is divided up into two separate parts, part A and part B. These parts cover different things and they also have a different cost structure. So as you probably know, Medicare was never intended to pay 100% of healthcare costs. So there are costs associated with Medicare. So part A is our hospitalization coverage. This covers inpatient hospitalization. So if you're admitted into the hospital, skilled nursing facilities, home health care, and hospice. All of that is gonna be covered under our Part A. Part B is our medical coverage. This includes outpatient services, doctors and providers, preventative benefit, and durable medical equipment. So essentially most things that happen outside of a hospital setting are gonna be um, covered under your Part B. So Part A is your hospitalization coverage, and Part B is your medical coverage. It's important to know also that Medicare doesn't cover anything that it deems non-medically necessary. And for Medicare, that means vision, dental, and eye. So Medicare is not gonna cover any vision, dental, or eye coverage. It will, however, um, cover like diseases of the eye. So things like glaucoma, for example, people always say, does it cover glaucoma? Yeah, it covers glaucoma because that's a medical condition. When we talk about vision, we're more talking about, you know, eyeglasses and an eye exam that won't be covered. Like I mentioned, uh, Medicare does cover a whole host of preventative benefits under your Part B. Right now, the, the hot topic is that COVID-19 vaccination. Medicare is gonna cover your COVID-19 vaccination. It also covers the flu shot, the pneumonia shot, the hepatitis B vaccine. 
It also covers a welcome to Medicare physical, an annual wellness check, diabetes testing supplies. Most of these preventative benefits have absolutely no out-of-pocket costs. There are hundreds of screening tests and procedures that Medicare covers as a preventative benefit at no cost. You can see a complete list of all of these at Medicare.gov. So if you go to Medicare.gov, you're going to have a whole list of preventative benefits. You also get a, a booklet in the mail every year. It's called Medicare and You, and it has our um, our date on it or the year on it. So right now it says Medicare and You 2021. You should have received that, and it's red, white, and blue. And inside that book is all of those preventative benefits. So you receive that every single year that you're on Medicare, and that is an absolutely great resource. And one of the things that it's a great resource for are these preventative benefits. So make sure you're taking advantage of all the pre preventative benefits that are available to you as a Medicare beneficiary. So now we're gonna talk about cost. When we're talking about our 2021 Medicare amounts, it's important to remember that these amounts are if the only thing you had was that red, white, and blue card. So when we talk about co-pays, deductibles, all of that right now, we are talking about if the only insurance you had was that red, white, and blue card. Most people on this call probably have a supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan, so they're not paying these, you're, you're not paying these Medicare amounts, but we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. So these amounts are if the only thing you had was your red, white, and blue Medicare card. So we'll cover part A first. Part A is our hospitalization coverage. Most people do not pay a premium for their Part A. You've already paid it through your Medicare taxes. So if you worked for 10 years or 40 quarters, or you were married to someone who worked for 10 years or 40 quarters, you are not gonna pay a premium for your Part A. There is a hospital deductible, however, of $1,484. So what that means is if you are admitted into the hospital, you will have to pay your first $1,484 of your care. That deductible is gonna cover the first 60 days in a hospital stay when you're admitted into the hospital. At day 61, you will start having daily co-pays. That deductible is also gonna cover the first 20 days in a skilled nursing facility. So many of you are probably familiar, if you're admitted into the hospital, pretty often you're gonna be discharged, but you're not quite ready to go home. You're gonna to have to go into a skilled nursing facility to, to do some you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy. So you're gonna to go to a, a skilled nursing facility. So that's what that is. So that deductible is gonna cover the first 20 days of that transitional skilled nursing facility. At day 21, you will start having daily co-pays for that nursing facility. So that's part A. Part B, works differently. Most people pay a premium for their Part A. In 2021, that premium is $148.50. This premium can be income-based, so if you are in a higher income bracket, you uh, may pay more for that monthly premium. And there is a penalty for your monthly premium if you delay enrollment into Medicare, and that penalty is 20% for every year you delay. So if you are eligible for Medicare and you are not working and covered by current employer health insurance, you will incur a penalty for every year you delay enrollment into Medicare. This premium, you can pay it directly to Social Security if you are not yet receiving a Social Security cash benefit. If you are receiving a Social Security cash benefit, this premium is gonna be deducted from your check. I, I always say check and I've, sometimes people say, no one gets checks anymore, it's all direct deposit, but it's gonna be deducted from that amount before you receive it into your bank. Uh, Part B also has an annual deductible of $203. So that is a $203 deductible you're responsible for for your medical care at the beginning of the year. After that deductible, Medicare essentially pays 80%. So Medicare is an 80-20 payer. Medicare is gonna cover 80% of that Medicare approved amount, and then the beneficiary is gonna be responsible for 20%. So if the only thing you had was that red, white, and blue Medicare card, you would be paying 20% of all of your medical expenses, essentially. There are some Medicare savings programs available for lower income folks. Those income thresholds start at $1,469 a month uh, for someone who is 
single and the resource thresholds, which is essentially money in the bank. So it doesn't count a car, it doesn't count a home. It essentially accounts any money that you have immediate access to. It's gonna uh, be $7,960. So if you are under those income and resource levels, you're gonna qualify for some sort of savings program that's gonna help pay either your premium, your co-insurance, your deductible, just depends on where you fall um, in those income and resource ranges. If you or someone you know think may qualify for one of those Medicare savings programs and you're not already on it, you can call us at OSHIP, that hotline number I gave you, and we'll be able to help you apply for a Medicare savings program. You can also do that through your local job and family services um, office as well. It is a little quicker. Um, right now, JFS offices around the state are a little overloaded. So um, giving us a call is probably a good idea if you want to apply for a Medicare savings program. Okay, so we talked about original Medicare. So if we think back to when we talked about our options, we had option one with our three cards in our wallet, our original Medicare, which we discussed. Now we're going to talk about secondary insurance. So secondary insurance is something you have to help you pick up those costs associated with original Medicare. So that big cost is that 20%. You know, Medicare is an 80-20 payer. So secondary insurance is something that you're going to purchase to help pick up or that you'll have either by purchasing or former employer or something like that to help pick up that 20%. So there's three ways that you can have secondary insurance. The first way is group health insurance. So you may have insurance from a former employer or union that supplements your Medicare. So you may have worked somewhere that offers you secondary insurance. Only you know if you have that, obviously. The other kind of secondary insurance is Medicaid, which is assistance for people with limited income or one of those Medicare savings programs. So if you are on Medicaid or, or an MSP program, that acts secondary to your Medicare. So that'll help pick up that 20%. The third way and the way we're gonna spend the most time on this morning is Medicare supplemental insurance. So Medicare supplemental insurance is private insurance that coordinates with original Medicare. And this is also called Medigap or MedSup. So if you hear the term um, Medicare supplemental insurance, Medigap, MedSup, those terms are interchangeable, they're all the same thing, and that's what we're talking about right now. So Medicare supplemental insurance has no network, so you can go to any doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare. All of them do. You know, people always ask me, what's the network for Medicare? Everyone accepts Medicare, 99.9% .9 of doctors and providers. So supplemental insurance has no network. How supplemental insurance works is it pays after original Medicare. So original Medicare pays its share, usually it's that 80% or it's, um, it's that 80% and then the supplement pays after Medicare. So then the supplement picks up what Medicare did not. Medicare supplemental insurance has a premium. So you're gonna pay every month to have supplemental insurance. But then after you pay that premium, you have little to no out of pocket cost. There are different plans available for folks and they're lettered, they're A, B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, N. So those are all the different plans. The most popular one is a plan G, so I use that as an example um, in the next slide. The plan premiums are gonna vary by company. So when we say the plans are standardized, what we mean is every one of those lettered plans, so like a G plan, for example, if you purchase a G plan from Aetna or a G plan from United Healthcare, the benefits associated with that plan are going to be the same. So they're gonna offer the same benefits. They're gonna pay at the same rate. The benefits are the same, but the premium, how much you are paying for that supplement is gonna vary from company to company. So that's where the change is how much you are paying for the supplement. The premiums are gonna vary. Supplement insurance has something called a guaranteed issue period. So when you joined Medicare, so when you started your Part B, regardless of how old you were, you had six months to purchase Medicare supplemental insurance with no medical questions being asked. So they could not deny you for any medical history, your age, anything. They had to take you, it's a guaranteed issue. After that six month period, there is no guarantee that you will be able to purchase a supplement. They can ask you medic medical questions outside of that guaranteed issue period. 
you can call us at OSHIP and we can help you get quotes for this insurance. So if you don't wanna reach out to an insurance agent right now, you wanna gather some information, we can get you the quote associated with supplemental insurance. So you can always do that. And we have them for everyone. We don't, you know, we don't make recommendations. We don't um, push one company over the other. We are totally neutral, totally unbiased. So we can get you everything you need so you can make a decision for yourself. Here are all the different plans that are available. If you look over to the left-hand side, that says benefits. Essentially what that means is these are things that you are going to pay for on Medicare. So if you look over to the part, the G plan, which again, I said is the most popular, so that's why I'm using it as, as an example, but there's other ones available. That plan G covers everything except the, the part B deductible. So the part B deductible of $203. So what this chart is telling you that if you have original Medicare plus a G plan, the only thing you are going to pay for out of pocket is going to be that Part B deductible of $203. So you're gonna pay a premium every month for your supplement, but when you go to use your insurance, you're going to have no out of pocket cost. These supplements usually start around $110 to $130. And then um, they usually go up every year based on your age at a very small rate. So usually from two to 5%. So the only reason they can raise your rates is because of your age. They're called age obtained plans. So they do go up every year. They can go up every year, but only based on your age and only by a small percentage point. Okay, so we talked about supplemental insurance. So we're talking about option one still, the three cards in our wallet. We have our original Medicare card. We're paying our premium for our original Medicare, our 148.50. Then we have some sort of secondary insurance. If we don't have it from a former employer, we're also paying for that. So we're paying about, let's say we're paying 110 for that. But again, outside of those premiums, we have little to no out-of-pocket costs because that supplement is comprehensive coverage. So now we're gonna talk about our third card in our wallet, which is our prescription drug coverage. Medicare's prescription drug coverage is called Part D. So if you just remember D for drug, and this is also offered by private insurance companies that contract with Medicare. No matter which way you have your Medicare, option one or option two, you are gonna have Part D coverage. It's either gonna be as a separate thing, which is what we're talking about now, that third card in our wallet, or it's gonna be available through your Medicare Advantage plan, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Our initial enrollment for Part D is going to be the same as our Medicare. So when you sign up for Medicare, you're also gonna sign up for your Part D plan. Part D plans work a little bit different than supplemental plans in that they have an open enrollment period every year. And this is extremely important. If you take one thing away from our presentation this morning, it would be the, I would want it to be the open enrollment period. So every year from October 15th to December 7th, there's an open enrollment period where you can change your drug plan for the following year. So every fall from October 15th to December 7th, you can change your drug plan and your new coverage will begin on January 1st. So think about your uh, Part D plan as a one-year contract that you can change every single year. And it's really important that you're looking at this plan every single year. Here's why. You have a lot of choice when it comes to Part D plans. There are over 30 Part D plans that are available to people who are living in Ohio. Every single one of those Part D plans are going to have a different formulary. What a formulary is, is that plan takes all of the drugs that are available in the United States and they say, here's how much those drugs are gonna cost on our drug plan. And here's how much they're gonna cost if you go to Giant Eagle. And here's how much they're gonna cost if you go to Drug Mart. And here's how much they're gonna cost if you get them online. And every single one of those plans is going to have a different formulary. So it is extremely, extremely personalized to you what plan is going to be the most cost effective because there's so many variables. Again, what drugs you're on, where you like to go to the pharmacy, are you willing to get your drugs through the mail, what your zip code is. 
All of those things are going to affect what the best drug plan is for you. Husbands and wives, rarely on the same drug plan if they've gotten it checked out and they're on the best one for them. The thing to know about these drug plans as well is, again, they're a one-year contract. So if you get to the end of the year and you say, well, I didn't make any changes. I, I, I'm on the same drugs. I go to the same pharmacy. I'm good. I'm not going to check it this year. There might be changes to that drug plan that take effect on January 1st that affect how much you are paying for your drugs. Or there might be a new plan available that wasn't available last year that is better for you. So a lot of things can happen with the drug plans that don't always make it, and usually they don't, make it the best just to stay in it because you haven't made any changes. So if you can get in the habit of doing this every single year, you can really save a lot of money. We regularly, regularly save people hundreds of dollars a year just by switching their drug plan. There's easy ways to do this. You can call our hotline. Call our hotline from October 15th, December 7th, have a list of your drugs, know where you prefer to go to the pharmacy. It takes 15 minutes. If you're, you know, if you're organized, if you have your drugs, they'll ask you what your drugs are, um, what your dosages are, and then they'll be able to figure out the best plan for you. You can also do this yourself. If you go to, oops, sorry, if you go to medicare.gov, you'll be able to do this yourself as well. Um, if you're tech savvy. The other thing you can do is we do go out into the community. We're not doing as many um, face to face this year because of COVID, um, but we also are in the community doing this face to face. So your local senior center might have someone available as well to do it face to face. The other option, of course, is to do one of those virtual counseling sessions I talked about. So over the computer, face to face, we can share a screen, we can look at, at this. So there are a lot of different options that you have to get help doing this. Um, so if there's one thing you take away from my presentation, like I said, take this away that we need to be looking at our prescription drug plan every single year. So how much does Part D cost? These are 2021 costs. So we don't have the 2022 ones yet. We'll get those later in the fall. So there's a huge variety. So like I said, there's over 30 different plans. So you could be paying all the way from $7.30 a month in your premium all the way to $88. So huge range. Um, so again, the best thing that you could possibly do is to get with an OSHIP counselor, to call the OSHIP hotline, to do a virtual appointment, to make sure that you're in the best plan for you. The copays are usually about 25% of the retail cost or a flat amount. And there is something called catastrophic coverage. So if you are on a lot of prescription medications, expensive prescription medications, and you reach um, 10, 000, over $10,000 in your total drug cost that you're paying for, you're gonna reach something called catastrophic coverage. And at that point, you're only gonna pay 5% of the retail cost for the rest of the year. So there are some stop gaps um, built into the system to try to help people um, save some money with those really, really expensive prescription drugs. It's also important to know that Part D does have a late enrollee penalty. So there is a penalty of 1% for every month you delay enrollment and do a Part D plan if you don't enroll when you are first eligible for Medicare. So if you don't have a prescription drug plan right now, please give us a call and we can get you enrolled in one right away um, to avoid incurring any more penalty. There is a program called Extra Help with Prescription Drugs. Um, it's not a very creative name, but it does say what it is. And it's a low income subsidy to help people who are lower income afford their prescription drugs. The requirements to qualify for the extra help program are higher than the Medicare savings program. So even more people are gonna qualify for the extra help program. And um, those qualifications start at $1,630 as a single. So if you make less than that every month, you're, gonna, you're probably gonna qualify for the extra help program. Again, if you call us at OSHIP, we can help you um, get signed up for that. Okay, so that was all of our option one. I promise option two is shorter, but our option one, just to review, original Medicare, some sort of secondary insurance and prescription drug coverage. So I have three things that encompass all of my needs or option two. So remember, these are either or. So we talked about option one, or I can go with option two, which is a Medicare Advantage plan. 
A Medicare Advantage plan is an alternative to original Medicare. It's something offered by private insurance companies to replace original Medicare. So you take that red, white, and blue card, you put it in a drawer. If you're signing up for original Medicare card, now you have a shiny new card from a private insurance company as a replacement to original Medicare. You are still enrolled in Medicare, so you're still paying your Part B premium. You're still enrolled into Medicare, you're just using a Medicare Advantage plan. There's no age or medical restrictions whatsoever when it comes to Medicare Advantage plans. So anyone can get a Medicare Advantage plan. There's no age or medical restrictions. These plans are restricted by county because, because all of these plans are, have a network of doctors and providers. So the plans that are available to you guys up in the Cleveland area are gonna be different to the plans available to beneficiaries down here in Franklin County, where I live in Columbus. And the reason for that is these do have networks. There's two types, there's an HMO and a PPO. An HMO is a more restrictive network. So what the HMO is, is they say, you know, Cleveland Clinic is a good example. Cleveland Clinic has a um, HMO, Medicare Advantage plan. What that, that says is if you go anywhere outside of the HMO, outside of the Cleveland Clinic organization, you're not going to have any coverage. A PPO is less restrictive in that it says, here's the preferred providers that you go to. If you go outside of these, we're going to cover you, but it'll be more expensive. These plans do include a Part D benefit. So they do have a Part D, you have drug coverage within that one card, within that Medicare Advantage plan. So these plans work more similar to the plans you were used to when you were working, those group health insurance plans. So you have that network and you also have co-pays. So unlike the supplemental option, these plans have co-pays. So when you go to the doctor, you're gonna pay you know, $5. You get an x-ray, you're gonna pay $150. You stay in the hospital, you're gonna pay $500 a night. And those are just broad examples because the network's premiums and co-pays are gonna co-pays are going to vary by plan. There's a lot of options when it comes to Medicare Advantage plans. Every county um, in the state has at least 25 different options available to you. So there's a lot of different options that you can choose when it comes to Medicare Advantage plans. And what you pay, what your out-of-pocket costs are, what those networks are, are going to change based on which plan you choose. These plans also have an annual open enrollment period. It's the same open enrollment period. So just like we talked about with the Part D plans, think about your Medicare Advantage plan as a one-year contract. And every fall during open enrollment, you have from October 15th to December 7th to pick your plan out for the following year. So everything we talked about with the Part D, it still applies here. And one of the big reasons is because it has a Part D component. So all of these different Advantage plans also have different drug formularies because the Part D component is within that plan. So every reason we talked about why it's so important to look at your plan every year when it comes to the, the Part D plans applies to Medicare Advantage plans. So make sure if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan that you're still looking at this every single year during open enrollment. So some questions that we get a lot are, what happens if I wanna switch options? So we talked about option one and option two. So what happens if I wanna switch which option I'm going with? So if you think back to when we talked about supplements, we talked about the fact that there's a guaranteed issue period. So I only have six months after I sign up for Medicare Part B, to purchase a supplement with no medical questions being asked. I apologize, there's a thunderstorm outside, so if you hear anything, I think it's, it's thunder. Um, with no medical questions being asked. So if I'm on a Medicare Advantage plan and it's been you know five years and I wanna switch to a supplement, there's no guarantee that I would be able to purchase the supplement. They could ask me medical questions or they could deny me based on my age. Same goes from supplement to supplement. So once I choose a company I'm gonna go with with my supplement, there's no guarantee that I would be able to switch to a different company. It does not apply to Medicare Advantage plans, however. So we talked about how there's no age or medical restrictions with Medicare Advantage plans. So if I'm on a supplement and I want to go to a Medicare Advantage plan, I can do that during any time, any time during that fall open enrollment period. So I can do that during the open enrollment period. That's what it's for. 
and it would start January 1st of the following year. Same thing with Medicare Advantage to Medicare Advantage plan. I can do that during open enrollment. That's what that open enrollment period is for. So switching to a Medicare Advantage plan, not a problem. Slipping to Switching to a supplement, you may not, there's no guarantee that you would be able to purchase that supplement. Now that is not to say it doesn't happen. It happens all the time. Call the company, hey, I want a supplement. They might ask a few questions and they might say, hey, no problem. So I don't wanna dissuade anyone from trying, but just know there is no guarantee. So this is a great at a glance chart in the handout section, like Jackie said, and like I mentioned, we have our Medicare 101 book. So that's a great resource for everybody. And in that, there's also this chart. So this is kind of an at a glance chart that can show you the differences in a comprehensive way. So the cost. But both ways, you're still paying your Part B premium. You're still in Medicare, still paying that premium. The supplement is going to have a higher plan premium every month. But when you go to use your insurance, you're going to have little to no out-of-pocket cost. With the Advantage plan, you're going to have a lower plan premium. There's a lot of Advantage plans that you don't pay any additional premium, but then you're going to be charged out-of-pocket as that plan is used. So every time you're using your insurance, you're, you are going to be charged out-of-pocket. With the provider, provider choice, the supplement, again, no network. Any provider that accepts original Medicare is going to accept your supplement. Medicare Advantage plan, they're gonna have a network. You're gonna have that network of doctors and providers. Some other considerations is that Medicare Advantage plans do have some added benefits. So they do have, some of them do have some vision, dental and fitness benefits. Um, the, the amount of coverage of those benefits are gonna vary from plan to plan. So if you're choosing a plan based on that, you gotta be really careful and make sure you know all the details of those added benefits. And then of course, like we talked about with this supplement, you have to purchase a separate Part D plan, whereas the Medicare Advantage plan, that's gonna be included. Know your options. Again, we have two options. We can have our original Medicare, three cards in our wallet, option or Medicare Advantage, secondary insurance and prescription drug coverage, or we have that one card in our wallet, that Medicare Advantage plan. Uh, before I open the door for questions, I do wanna talk about Medicare fraud. Unfortunately, this is something that we have to hit every time we speak to the public because Medicare fraud is rampant, unfortunately. And I really wanna encourage you to, if you see something, I really encourage you to report it. At the ODI, I, I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning of my presentation, I should have, OSHIP is housed inside of the Ohio Department of Insurance. So technically I work for the Ohio Department of Insurance and we're funded through a federal grant and I do OSHIP work. So I'm part of the OSHIP organization. But we work very closely with others at the ODI and one of the things that we do is we work on Medicare fraud. So the ODI takes Medicare fraud extremely seriously and they investigate every single instance that we send over to them. So if you are seeing anything um, that agents should not be doing, please, please, please report it so we can look into it. And I always like to put this caveat on here and say, you know, 99% of insurance agents are good and they're doing the right things and they're following the rules. And But it's that 1% that we really need to be careful and make sure that we're reporting it when we see it. So door-to-door -door sales, no one should be coming to your door to sell you a Medicare product unless you've invited them to your home. Giving out cash gifts or gifts exceeding $15. Any high pressure sales tactics, and that's one of those things you know when you see it. Uh, misrepresenting a plan or giving out incomplete information. One of the more common ones we see with this is telling you that a doctor or hospital is in network and then when you go to use your insurance, it's actually not in network. So that would be, be, be misrepresenting a plan. The biggest one that we see right now is representing themselves as Medicare. This isn't so much agents, this is over the phone. Someone calls you and says they're calling you from Medicare. No, Medicare is never going to call you. There's too many Medicare beneficiaries. If they're calling you and say they need to confirm your information, they need to update your profile, Medicare is never going to call you. If it seems like they are and it's legit and they have a lot of information and you believe them, ask them for their name, ask them you know, what this is, hang up and call the Medicare hotline and say, someone just called me, give their name, you know, and you can check it out that way. But if they're calling and saying they're from Medicare, that is probably not the case. 
We also partner with Pro Seniors, which is our Ohio Senior Medicare Patrol, and they respond to fraud, waste, and abuse. So if you're seeing anything that you believe is Medicare waste or abuse, you can always call the Senior Medicare Patrol at 1-800-488-6070. And before I open it up to questions, and again, if you guys have any questions, please type them in the question pane. I just wanna remind everyone um, of some of our services we offer. So we have that toll-free hotline. 1-800-686-1578, all, all of your Medicare questions, local here in Ohio. It's not a national hotline. You're gonna get someone right away. Hardly anyone ever holds on our hotline. Call them during open enrollment if you wanna do that Part D comparison over the phone. You can also email us at oshipmail at insurance.ohio.gov. You can visit our website, insurance.ohio.gov, and you can set up a Medicare appointment, virtual counseling like this, but one-on-one, -on -one, at ohiomedicarecounseling.as.me. And with that, I will open it up to any questions. Sarah, we have a question here. So I am 70 and still working full time with full insurance coverage from my employer. So will I get the penalty for the late enrollment in Part D? No, you will not have a penalty for Part B or Part D. You will have no penalty whatsoever. If you're covered under current employer coverage, that also extends to Part D. So whenever you're ready to retire, what you'll have to do is you will get a form from your HR department, and this is very common. They, they know how to do this. And it'll just say, so-and-so has had coverage from this date when you turned 65 until now when you were retiring. And then you'll submit that with your application to avoid that fine. I always tell people, you know, right now it's kind of hard to say because I know people unfortunately are leaving their jobs and getting let off and things like that. But you really want to give yourself a little bit of a runway. So maybe two months, three months if possible before you retire to make sure that all of that paperwork's in order and we can get you signed up for Medicare right away so there's no gap in coverage there. Okay, another question we have is, I am in my 50s and on SSDI, when I signed up for Medicaid, I was told I could only be on an Advantage plan. Is this correct? That's correct. So in order to qualify for a supplement, you do have to be 65. So since you are under 65, the only option available to you is an Advantage plan. If you're interested in getting a supplemental insurance plan, you will have a guaranteed issue when you turn 65. So it's kind of an exception to that six month rule is someone who is on Medicare under 65 when you turn 65, you will have a guaranteed issue. So if you want to get a supplement when you turn 65, you can do that, no problem. Just make sure you do within that six month period. So give us a call and we can help you with that when it's time. And, and keep your ears open too. I mean, hopefully we'll do education on this if it happens. There are other states where you can have a supplement under 65. Ohio's not just one, just not one of them. So that could always change. Um, I have no inside information or anything like that, but since it's gonna be a while before you turn 65, there's always a chance that that could change. But as of right now, that would be the rule for your situation. And right now I do not, oh, here we go. Um... And I'm not sure the whole question came across in the pane here. Um, somebody started typing, I am 50, what do I get? I don't think I got the whole question. Um, that's the only text I see. Well, I think if, unless you're on disability, or you have ESRD, you're not gonna qualify for Medicare. So if you need insurance, your options would be Medicaid if you're low income, or you'd have to go on the exchange, um, the marketplace exchange, which I'm not super familiar with because that's not my area of expertise. But if you have more questions, you can call us at ODI and they can point you in the right direction with that.
Any other questions? I don't see anything else at this time. Okay, well, I want to thank everyone yeah, again for us. taking the time and please call us on our hotline if you have any questions whatsoever relating to your Medicare. Thank you, everybody. And remember, when the webinar is over, um, you will get a poll. Or a, I'm not a poll, a survey, I'm sorry. Um, so if you could take a moment and fill that out, um, we love the uh, to get new webinar ideas for our presentations. Um, so I'd appreciate that. And I wanna thank Sarah so much. It was some great information. I learned stuff <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so hopefully everyone else gained something uh, from the presentation and you know how to contact her if you have future questions. Thank so you. Thank you very much. <laughs>